are at a auction site in Grimes, Iowa, and I am going to take in the paperwork. It's a drivable <laughs> vehicle this time. Woo! Uh, and then I'm assuming I'll drive it out or they'll bring it out to me and then I'm going to winch it up. So that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to head in. Uh, as I looked at the weather, I realized it's going to be raining all day or all morning at least. So yeah, <laughs> it is what it is. It's not too cold by any means. So it'll be all right. I got a hood on. All right, hey, we're headed over there to load something up on here. See you in a second. And we wait. Uh, so apparently the dispatch company did not email over the vehicle release form which you have to have to have the pickup site release the vehicle um, they typically always say hey what's a good email for you so I can send over this form this guy didn't say anything so I didn't figure it was needed because uh, just each backhaul it's just you know has their own quirky differences on what you have to do to pick up the vehicle sometimes it's just showing the paperwork and that's it uh, sometimes it's hey I'm here to pick up this thing and then they give you the keys so we're waiting to hear back from uh, my dispatch or my backhaul lady uh, within IT uh, because they are a California based company so they're not gonna open for another hour or two uh, yeah so I'm just gonna see if we can cancel this dispatch because I have no intentions of waiting an hour or two for a $212 haul up to Chicago. Stay tuned. And got it right after I started recording that because I'm like, dude, I am waiting forever. Uh, I get a text from the dispatch guy and an email with the release. So we're gonna walk over to the check-in get a guy to locate it for us and then we'll drive it out and somewhere over there is my truck and we'll winch it up because that's easier for me than driving it on so now we hunt for a 2018 silver chevy silverado out here in a parking lot which i don't feel like i see a silver truck uh, anywhere so yeah we'll see that it okay so we are in it and the auction shuttle guys typically shuttle their guys around but he's like if we ever see somebody just walking around wandering we'll pick them up and help them out uh i am back in the corner of this auction place which is huge i would not have found this i started headed that way and I'm like, nah, like these look like older junkers. It was all the way back by like their car wash body shop area. So here we go.
I'll fill you guys in tomorrow. <laughs> so, Hustle Hall and Tow had a video, I think just out, that talked about loading at night sucks. And he is not wrong. Uh, if you haven't, head over, subscribe to Hustle Hall and Tow, and let's get his subs up. Anyways, uh, so it was dark last night as you saw in that flashing light video and oh man white pigeon closes at 10 like i owe that lady a drink or something because i got out of there about 10 35 ish so i just did like clear pictures um luckily you know there was nothing but it was just kind of like let's hurry up get in get out make sure it's the right units uh, no noticeable damage and then let's hurry up and get to Elkhart so what I like to do now is I leave Tuesdays uh, I drop you know a backhaul in typically Chicago then I'll get to the Elkhart area to pick up a camper or pick up two units Tuesday night and I like to get back to the red roof in and that street that is you know next or kind of goes up the back side of the menards uh i just like to park here now in theory when i like try to push the limits i should be able to freaking get back to like juliet maybe morris illinois like if i'm like having the perfect trip but you know me that never freaking happens uh, so I'm lucky to not get a freaking violation, a 14 hour violation like I may have last night by one minute uh, getting off the exit because for some reason there are cones closing off one lane on both east and westbound on 80 between Middlebury and Elkhart. Uh, and if it wasn't for that stupid 45 mile an hour uh, speed limit right in that area I would have actually made it to the red roof well I would have made it down the road to the red roof before I went into violation um, so I tried to pull over off-duty personal conveyance when there was a minute left but I was just you know a few seconds a few seconds too too short <laughs> but uh yeah we're gonna check the oil you know just good general pre-trip stuff you should do and then head back home uh, these things will park at home in Iowa for the night and then I will head to Colorado Springs Thursday tomorrow so stay tuned and we're at a point where the oil is low enough that I'm going to add it again I need to change oil in this uh, ASAP and I just didn't get it done like I mentioned in the last video. Uh, so hopefully, well, I'm not going to get it done tonight. I was going to say, hopefully, maybe I could get it done tonight. <laughs> I'm not going to get it done tonight. Um, because I would like to install that Amsoil bypass. And uh, it's just a little different of a setup. So you got to get some fittings from like a, a local place. They don't come with all the fittings you need. So, so I would keep some extra stuff in there uh i'm gonna add about two quarts of oil i think and that'll put me right back up to the top and then we're on the road all right guys see ya okay so we're fueling up and then heading to b-dubs in Des Moines to 
meet up with the family and have some freaking wings and maybe a red's apple ale i don't know at the stop sign use the left lane to turn onto iowa speedway drive Okay, so we are actually at a Love's outside of Des Moines looking for my friend Travis, the guy that got me into RV transport because he needs some help with a unit that he has with a door just not staying closed. So I think that's him right there. Gotta help him out. Here's the problem lock. It's not latching. There's Travis. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. Anything? And so it's just not see that stain far enough down the wind catches it flaps it open so we're gonna bungee right there up there somewhere so that it has that internal just pressure holding it in as he's traveling down yeah. you saw the solution and those are just some of the things that you got to do to keep moving along down the road uh, when it comes to, I'll say RV transport, but I bet really anything trucking related. Change of plans on that B-dubs. They have a, uh, they did it maybe a few months ago, but now they have a mandate that uh, I just don't subscribe to, so we don't support it. And we're gonna have some Canes, Raging Canes chicken in Mikasa. Okay. All right, hey, will you sit in the backpack with the big sissy? All right, climb up there. Ah, we gotta get little sissy in here. No, you can't take your shoes off. Uh, baby winter. And the queen of the castle. Traded in for a white truck. Stop. Stop. Guys! Now we are on the road. We will get to all but Colorado Springs today, and then we will drop tomorrow morning. I may look at getting a backhaul. I may not. Uh, this is a Malia weekend, so it may just be a little more important to get right back, but I'm gonna check the load board out uh, when I fuel up down in um, Salina, Kansas. Uh, they have diesel right now for 240 something, which seems crazy. So yeah, that's it, uh, to the road. Tell me what you think. I think it's time I get a new wheel. Yeah, yeah I think so. 
<laughs> that was its last ride right there. So I'll get a new one of those on the way back on this trip, wherever you get those things from. repair I'm gonna have them scan it for 112 bucks because no auto zone type place sells the or has the scanners that have the round hookup or whatever it's more of like a specialty type part is what they all said so here we are back on the road nothing serious uh, they had scanned it so there was a bunch of previous codes which you know he, he was just like you never know when the last time somebody clears out the codes with this being a truck that's over 700 and some thousand miles on it you know but uh it was something with the computer systems some like it was basically like it was like a glitch in the computer systems talking to one another uh, but he said if it happens again, probably have to take it to Freightliner where they have the ability to separate out each individual system to see which is the one causing the issue to have all of the communications kind of glitch. But again, nothing nothing in terms of as you're driving, you're like, oh shit, what just happened? It just came on out of nowhere. So we're on the road. All right, see you guys. you haven't you need to go check out Oscar's Bar and Grill if you're in Lyman Colorado because that place not only delicious but very fairly priced under $20 for my meal and a drink or something yeah I don't know yeah, it was great, though. You should go check it out if you haven't. All right, hey, we're on the road. We're going to fuel up at the TA here, and then we will make it to, I think, Salina, Salima, whatever, Kansas, where I'm going to be live tonight in a premiere. So, uh, yeah. All right, guys, see you.